Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to day 15 of the 31 Days of Horror. DBougie86 here again. And today I have a film from 1989. Yes, this film is actually from 1989. If you watched my previous review yesterday, I fucked up on the day, but I had 1989 on the mind that day for some weird reason. I think I was actually watching another film from that year. That's why I got fucked up. But if you watched my previous review, it's really 1988. But, oh well, shit happens, you know. But yes, this film is from 1989. And this film has three titles for this release of it. This was put out by Vinegar Syndrome. Originally, it was a trauma film. And Vinegar Syndrome release goes by the title The House on Tombstone Hill. Yes, really cool. Or The Dead Come Home. Also really cool. And also, if you owned and seen this through the old Tromer title, Dead Dudes in the House. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Dead Dudes in the House, a.k.a. The House on Tombstone Hill, a.k.a. The Dead Come Home. Uh, pretty much the gist of The House on Tombstone Hill is we're introduced to our main character of Ron, who has a bunch of his friends come up to like this old house that he uh wanted to like uh restore to make it into like a party house pretty much and uh you know they end up going there and the house is like in shambles it's very uh grudge and dirty and decrepit and looks like no one's lived here for years pretty much so they end up starting there and getting the hang of it and then they run into this old woman yes uh, who's there mysteriously, uh, they don't pay her any mind, one of the friends ends up going to see what's up with the old woman, and pretty much what ends up happening after that is, uh, we find out that this house has, like, this supernatural presence to it, where this old woman is the old original owner of this house, and, uh, she's been dead for century uh, a while now it looks it when you see her and uh she just ended up uh starting to pick off the friends one by one and uh what ends up happening if you get killed in this house in a surrounding area of this house you end up coming back yourself and also uh trying to pick off people one by one pretty much so it's pretty much a tale of survival against the undead pretty much in this house and you know my thoughts on the film that's actually a very interesting idea for a film it's like a the way i would describe this movie it's like a uh slasher meets pet cemetery in a way because it has slasher-esque moments especially in the very beginning but then it turns into like uh these people coming back from the dead and they're not like your typical like dead people like zombie like they're like uh people that still talk and still interact with the actual cast and they actually have some funny lines. The lady, uh, well, she's not really a lady. It's actually a, a dude playing the old lady in this film, but, uh, fucking hilarious. The way that deliver lines. Uh, it kind of reminded me of, uh, if you ever seen any of the jackass movies, uh, when they're dressed up as old people and Spike Jones usually, dresses up as like this old like woman and shit you know that's what it kind of reminded me of especially the voice too i know i think it was a different voice that they used uh but you know it's fucking fun and uh you know the house itself has really cool atmosphere especially with the supernatural stuff that comes to play like uh they're trying to break out of the house when none of the windows are fucking uh opening and, and they won't break and then the shutters start to close on them and stuff it's really interesting the way that the house plays with the rest of the film you know it actually it seems like the house chooses who's next pretty much which i do dig that aspect of it uh, the acting is what you're gonna get there's some good performances uh, you know it's not the worst act in the world that i ever seen in any like indie films of this nature it has like a that nuance you could tell like when you're watching the film these people seem like they 
worked with each other and they knew each other in previous before the events of this movie so i was okay with that aspect of it it has some funny lines and shit with some of the characters especially uh uh the one character who's like the carpenter of the movie and he's a fucking i need to get my beer i need my beer i need my beer i need my smoke i need to open the door you know he's kind of high strung you know that type of character so you get that with this film uh Interestingly enough, the fucking gore is fucking amazing in this movie. There's some great kill scenes in this. Uh, one involving a window. I'll just leave it there if you haven't seen the film. Fucking awesome kill. Uh, yeah, Ed French did the effects of this movie. Uh, I know him from uh, working on uh, The Rejuvenator. And he also did uh, effects on Nightmare and a Damaged Brain. Uh, numerous effects he did. And I, I know he did... Uh, 2005 film Venom also uh but uh yeah fucking the gore is outstanding the kills if you want to watch like a movie just for kills in general check this movie out because the kills are phenomenal in this movie lots of great blood spray guts gore fucking you know it has it all in this one uh really cool release from Vinegar Syndrome in I heard stories of the, because this is the first time watch I ever seen of this movie. I heard of it before, but never seen it. I heard like the old like trauma release looked like complete like uh, ass pretty much, uh, which a lot of trauma movies do, especially uh, some of the prints that they use. Uh, the fucking transfer on this is fucking mind blowing. Uh, yeah, really great. It has a lot of grain in it still, but it's still fucking amazing looking. You know what I mean? I like movies with grain anyways. It brings back that like old feeling of like watching an older film. Which I do dig. Uh, yeah, what, what else can I say about the House on Tombstone Hill? It's a fun ass movie. If you haven't seen this yet and you're a fan of like gore and like supernatural. Like uh, different types of like maybe like a slasher mixed with like a supernatural like type of undead story. I say check it out. It's a fun ass film. Uh, if I had to rate it, I'm going to give it a solid 7.5 out of 10. I highly enjoyed this one, man, guys. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend this release. And it's cool that they, uh, with the slipcover, I know these are limited. They incorporated all the titles of the movie, which was kind of cool, you know. You got to respect that. And, you know, I'm going to read some of the special features on this. You get a, an interview with uh, three of the actors that are in the movie. Uh... One of them was uh, Douglas Gibson, who also played uh, the old lady. Uh, we have an audio interview with uh, the director, James Raffel, moderated by uh, Chris Pogfall. Exclusive behind-the-scenes still gallery. And, yeah, that's pretty much all you're going to get for special features. There's, like, a, in the course, the restoration, reversible art. Uh, you know how Vinegar Syndrome does it. But yeah, 7.5 out of 10 for The House on Tombstone Hill. Fun-ass flick. All right, guys, that's it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, we'll be back tomorrow with another one for you guys. I'll see you then. Peace out.